Hey guys, it's Chris Johnson, UCLA national champion. I need y'all to listen to the What's Brewing show. These dudes are off the hook. You're listening to the What's Brewing show, part of the What's Brewing show network, with your hosts, Jake Berryfield and Mike Regalado, and occasionally some friends talking all things UCLA sports. And now, it's time for the What's Brewing show. Well, hello, welcome to What's Brewing. I am your host, Jake Merrifield, and I'm joined by my good buddy, Mike Regalado. Morning. Mike Regalado. Morning, y'all. How are you doing? Morning. Probably morning for some of you. Somewhere. Mm-hmm. Somehow. Mm-hmm. You know, I cheated into keeping my Duolingo streak alive. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning in a sweat going, oh, shit. <laughs> so then I changed my time to like, uh, I think I changed it to like China time. Uh huh. And then oh, like, I preserved my streak. It was like, three, you know, I would have like preserved it because they have the streak freeze yeah, bullshit. Yeah, exactly. But I'm like, I don't want I'm that like, little streak on. freeze thing on my thing. Like, it's three o'clock in the morning. It's like, I haven't woken up for the next day yet. This shit counts. That's awesome. This Jake. shit counts. That, that's dedication. It's that's like 450 that. days now. That's, Fuck. Really? Yeah. Nice. I, 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 actually, I'm going to look. I'm going to look right I, now. I just hit 275. So but cheers, is Mike, cheers to that. Oh, cheers to you. It, it is Mike Rigolato from Brewer Report Online. Yeah. And um, this is an MJ edition. The ceiling is the roof. The MJ edition. But, uh, oh, yeah, Mike, what is that? My, my Duolingo streak button. What does that say? 441, damn. 441 days I got nice. going. Nice. So, yeah, was it going to freeze? Was I going to have a little blue freeze thing there on, like, 436? Hell no. I have streak freeze. I should probably be at, like, 300 right now. I don't use no goddamn streak <laughs> freeze, bro. Not me. Because I'm going to wake up at 3 in the morning in a cold sweat. W- really quick. Oh, shit. I we, can do we my are, Duolingo. We are so off the rails right now. By the way, already. ask me how much French I can speak. I, how much? I know, right? I'm like, May, I'm like, I, I did, I, I did uh, pass by someone because I'm, I'm doing mostly Spanish. I'm doing German. Um, uh, I, yeah, I just, I heard someone's conversation. I was like, oh, I know, I understood what you said. I'm starting to Yay, get there. Yay, Duolingo. Yeah. Okay, I uh, just what, discovered what, there's a French lady at work. I'm gonna try to hit her up. What does your uh, Duolingo icon look like? This is mine. Oh yeah, that's the one for bitches. same one. That's the one for bitches. Whatever, dude. <laughs> My basic, my Duolingo is orange with the fi- with the I eyes on fire. Did you know this? Okay, right there. Okay. Right there. Look at is that. It's a special one. Nope. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, this is a friend. <laughs> this is a friend who hasn't done Duolingo in a year. Oh yeah, it's sad. It's, yeah, it, I it looks that. like I a sad, thing. withered. Uh, what league are you at, Mike? What league? Yeah, what league? Are you oh god. Now you're now you're having me bust this out yeah. while people are wanting the. Uh, this is terrible, but <laughs> this is this whatever, is bad. Boss show. Podcasting. Oh, who the fuck? Cares? Um. Yeah, exactly. You know why? Because someone's flexing right now. What what league are you in, Mike? I'm I'm looking. I'm looking. Where did it go? Like I don't even have to ask. I you don't have to ask me. You should just assume. Diamond League, bro. Diamond. Yeah. Don't I'm, even start. I'm don't even of, start. Uh, anyway. Emerald League. Oh gosh, Mike. I know. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Yeah, I'm four away from the diamond. There you go. What a shame. Okay. But still, you know, Whoa. it's like get your ass cooking, bro. There are days when I'm like, you know, what's funny too, if <sighs> if you're at like the last hour of the day um, and you try to do it, uh, I've noticed that it, with Spanish, it, mm. it won't do the, the modern lesson. It'll do like really easy stuff and only six so you can keep your streak alive. <laughs> Mike, I have a question for you. What's up? Do you think girls like failures? Girls want someone with proven success. Like mm. Have you won any success. awards? Like a Congressional Medal of Honor? Or a Nobel Peace Prize? Or a number one in Diamond League. What are your real estate holdings? <laughs> do you have a diversified portfolio? <laughs> so far, so far du bel. <laughs> Jake. Good job, Mike. I'm proud of you. I'm, yes. I'm proud of us both. Thank you. Yes, we're right. both good duelingoers. Yeah. Welcome to What's Brewing. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, whatever Threads is at What's Brewing Show. Oh shit, my phone's going off. Uh, also, email What's Brewing Show at Gmail dot com and uh, What's Brewing dot Substack dot com or Patreon dot com slash What's Brewing Show or just What's Brewing Show dot com for how much, uh, Mike? A two dollars. Two dollars. Just two bucks a month. Uh, merchandise on a My Locker site. Look in the show notes for that. It's a pretty long and ugly uh, link. I have no idea whether or not... I think it works, though. Yeah, I think it does. I, I think Seamus bought some stuff there recently. And then also... Cheers, sir. The What's Brewing hotline. What's Brewing network hotline. 805-399-4WBS. Sucker Ran and Troy. Sucker Ran and Troy. Uh, and um, that's that's really it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we went on a little Duolingo rant there, so... Let's just get to uh, the brophilia headlines with uh, good old uh, Mikey. Gracias. Bro. Gracias y bienvenido. 
Oh, very good. To all that are listening. Yeah. How do you say it in French, Jake? Huh? How do you say it in French? Uh, bonjour, no. Sure. Nah, that's not it. Bonjour. <laughs> He's just a baller, man. Right? <laughs> just like, I'm doing uh, so good. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, Oh, the sexy-haired guy from all the movies and all that uh, in in Glorious Bastards, born Jerno. Oh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. That's I, that's yeah. that's probably my favorite character. I'm I'm a huge um, Tyler Durden fan. Yeah, but uh, uh, I forget his name in there. Gen- General something. I don't remember, but he's good. Off the, it's just, just a fantastic role. Yeah. Anyways, Nailed it. Broadway okay. headlines. Bro- well, if you want uh, some. Uh, in-depth detail about the UCLA women's basketball team. Go check out last week's, which we did a quite an extensive bro, uh, bro. chat about it, which uh, got some good feedback on that. You know, got uh, you got a lot of people saying, you know, thank you for covering it, especially in depth, uh, knowing what we have going forward. And someone did uh, point out <clears throat> we missed <clears throat> Amanda Muse. She was a freshman this year. She was the only freshman this year, true freshman, uh, but she's going to be returning. So oh, that's just, good. A, just an adage to that. Uh, but just really quickly, uh, women's basketball headlines. They finished 10th in the AP poll, which um, oh, well, final AP poll. It's the bro for the headlines, right? Yeah. With Mike. Yeah. With Mike Regalado. Hi, yeah. bro. Big applause, big Mike. We're not, we're not going into depth, Jake. Isn't basketball season headline. done with? Like, like I've been waiting to push this button. Uh, I would like to avoid the basketball shows for, for like as long as possible. Three months. Nope. And now you're still you're still starting with basketball. Nope. Yep. You son of a bitch. Well, what are we going to talk about mostly today? Foosball. Anything but basketball. Okay, thank you. All right, continue. <laughs> The Bruins uh, finished tenth in the final AP poll, which uh, I'd say that's that's pretty damn good. Um, I believe that's the sixth time in the last uh, ten years Go that they finished. Um, or the, uh, no, no, eighth time in the last fifteen years uh, that they finished in the top ten. So good for them. And we talked about how they had a talented team, but um, could have probably finished uh, higher with more hardware. With some hardware, uh, but there's uh, there's a bright future um, with 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 the Bruins, <clears throat> and some people are seeing that. Uh, ESP, I believe it was ESPN, came out with their way too early uh, top twenty five for next year, and they have the Bruins at number six. Which, yeah, as we said, you have a core of uh, six sophomores who are going to be juniors next year uh, on this uh, very successful team. Um, yeah, I can see that. I, I, I could Straight see them, baller. once again, staying in the top 10 for the majority of the season. That is great. Men's basketball. Mike, oh, oh, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I was going to say, I was just having this conversation. It's kind of weird because, you know, for the last 10 to 15 years, you especially have seen this in the WNBA, like there's been a push to kind of prop up the WNBA, you know, by the NBA, you know, put a bunch of money into it, try to give it more and more exposure. Yeah. Right. And... I think this was a huge, you know, this is one of the biggest years for women's college basketball this year. I think, I think that's undeniable on every level, right? Yeah. They had star power. They had interest. They, you know, it for a, a lot of people thought that the women's uh, tournament was more compelling than the men's tournament. Although, you know, nobody sneezing at uh, a back-to-back champ in, in UConn and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I was having this, but it, it's, it's gotten so big that I'm sitting at work. And of course I'm, you know, I'm in law enforcement talking to a bunch of, uh, uh, of cops and, even the 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 bro cops the are bro sitting fest. around the water cooler, you know. By water cooler, I mean around the you know around the jail cells, uh, chit chatting <laughs> and talking, right? And the bro cops were talking about the women's NCAA tournament, and mm-hmm. there was like actual like name dropping knowledge being spilled and stuff. Nice. Like, oh yeah, oh that chick's really good. Oh my gosh, oh I can't believe that lady did that. Oh my gosh, Caitlin Clark's did this. Blah, 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 you know, mm-hmm. like I was like I was like wow guys, this is crazy, bro. Well played, y'all. Well you know, played. but. Do you think it's fair too? Like, I think that it's cool because they spent a lot of energy to try to, you know, give it more publicity and things. Yeah, prop it up. Yeah. But I think that the the women's game has also you held up its end of the bargain in that, like, the skill level is just rising. Yeah. You know, the skill level is just rising. You know, especially if you look at versus twenty years ago, thirty years ago, or forty years ago. And I had a thought that. You know the skill level is rising for the for men's basketball too. You look at the NBA and you see all these guys and they can all shoot you know forty foot shots and dribble like crazy and and you know and it, like the skill level of just the athletes in general is on the rise because there's never been more training and there's never been more focus on the stuff. Is that is that a fair point? Yeah, I would say that the talent level has actually always been there. Um, Not the talent I, I level, the skill level. Skill level. Yeah, I would say that the skill level has always been. But you know, like like any sport. It evolves. 
you know, it's uh, like we have a like a lot. Okay, Steph Curry, for example, just he's known for making three point shots. That was not a thing, you know, back in Jordan's day. It was like you know, mid range jumpers, dunks, that that sort of thing. You know, Showtime defense, close lines, all that stuff. Um, but I think it's just it, it's it's evolved. So I think the skill level, um, yes, has improved, but it also has gone with the flow of the game. Well, and I'm not necessarily talking about the Steph Curry's because there's oh yeah, there's always been superstars, right? There was yeah. LeBron had his age, Steph and or LeBron and, and Curry, you know, have their age. You know, the Kobe's and and at the time LeBron, you know, was was the early aughts. You know, the the Shaqs, the the Magic Johnsons, Kareem's, all that stuff. Like yeah. it's gone through the years. They've always had the superstars. But I'm saying if you look at like the eighth, ninth, tenth person on the bench of these teams, the overall skill level of those guys, just like the Joe Schmo or the Jane Schmo in the in the league that they're in, yeah. has risen. However, this is the point, this is the point I'm trying to get to is I think you can make a really strong case that along with the skill level rising in the women's game, like the basketball IQ and the tactical uh you know uh you know uh chops is also rising in the girls' game, whereas I feel like a lot of times people are, are are making the argument that in like in men's hoops specifically, and you yeah. think about all of the things with like you know one and duns and not spending a lot of time in college and the AAU problem and all that stuff. It feels like even though the skill level is rising, the tactical stuff is falling by the wayside in the men's game, whereas the women's game it's like just both things are it just it's getting better and better in every kind of facet. Yeah, you know? uh, before the women's game gets uh diseased like the men's game with NIL and stuff like that and transfers, uh you know, transfer portal and all that. A well, lot if of they're going to teams... start making money. I mean, mm-hmm. you probably should give them a little bit of that money, right? It's just you got to figure out a good way to do it. So Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's, you know, it's it, you know, I I was just just right now thinking about what you're talking about skill level. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> there are more girls/women slash girls/women playing basketball. Um the competition is greater. The, the, you know, there are more camps. There are more <clears throat> coaches for personal development, stuff like that. It's more, more of what boys and men's sports uh, have, have had for, you know, years. Uh, so, yeah, no, definitely. I would say that the, that the skill level has um, improved. But I would also say that uh, it's, it's um, okay. So let, let me, let me get it uh, backtrack real quickly. I, I'm hearing, especially from a lot of men, a lot of pundits saying, oh, well, you know, <clears throat> will this last, uh, you know, uh, through next year? You know, is it going to be as good because we're not going to have uh, uh, Caitlin Clark or or, or uh, uh, Angel Reese? And I'm thinking, like, well, why the hell not? You know, I mean, it's, it's it, this is a team sport. And uh, even though Caitlin Clark is, is a, uh, a baller, you have people like, especially in our backyard, Lauren Betts and Juju Watkins, who are going to make, uh, a noise next year. Uh, it, it's it, the thing that, yes, the, the women's game had more viewers than the, the, the women's championship had more viewers than the men's championship last, uh, this year, which is awesome. But to that point too, you know, let everybody was like, Oh, we watched the, the women's championship game. A lot of people are not acknowledging what happened last year with, LSU and Iowa in like for those that do watch women's basketball, that was a hell of a game too. The, the, the championship games, the last several years have been really freaking good. I mean, you had Stanford in Arizona, two PAC 12 teams. Was it four years ago in the championship game? Like these are teams that are just putting out really good products. It's just wasn't covered. That's, that's, that's another aspect of this, but, but like, like again, to your point, since it is more visible, you're, you, there's more accessibility to it, and thus more skill. Yeah, and, and, and there's a whole big old batch of stuff going on here, in that they need more sports to cover, and there's you know more, you know and and they have to you know fill up that volume uh, they need for the product. But I think it's a good thing overall, and we'll end that here because we've you know done way too much goddamn basketball talk, Mike <laughs> already, and we only uh, went but to it, one side. It's good that the you know the the game itself is keeping pace with or, or exceeding or you know just it's able to hold up its end of the bargain with the amount of coverage that, that they're yeah. looking to you know looking to looking to give it and so it's cool and it, it's it was it's certainly a fun story and there are a lot of fun stories with uh, the women's game this year so uh, other than UCLA not being able to break through 
uh, very successful year, uh, I think, overall for for women's college hoops, exactly. which is cool. So, anyways, uh, Mike, you had a men's basketball story. Just really quickly uh, with Jeez. some men's headlines. Hurry uh, up. We'll get through it really quickly. Oh, you know, talk- they got some guys, didn't they? <gasps> yeah, we talked last week how uh, Will McClendon and Elan Feblu are out. Oh, boo. They Sorry, got some uh, transfers Nerd. in. Sky Clark. Uh, what a shame. Pretty, pretty sweet baller, uh, a guard. And uh, Kobe Johnson from USC, of all teams. Hmm. He should be. Why is it not working? Sorry, I'm trying to hit my That's drops. right. Uh, Kobe Johnson should be a very good defender and should hopefully mesh well in, in uh, Mick Cronin's uh, system. That's good. So that, that's huge. The, He's just a baller, man. There you All go. Right. The question mark uh, through, through, uh, throughout this whole early offseason is what's going to happen with Adembona? He could stay. He could go. Word on the street is he's most likely going. So that's unfortunate. And right. because he's going, that's obviously going to be another uh, scholarship. Uh, Bouncing right out of here. <laughs> Possibly. A scholarship. Allegedly. Uh, opened up. Uh-huh. Uh, UCLA is looking for some big men. Are there any big guys and, out there? Yeah, definitely. And there are some uh, players that uh, uh, apparently Cronin has uh, been on since they hit the portal or, you know, at least very recently. One would be Oklahoma State power forward uh, Eric Daly, who's uh, UCLA could use a power forward, a pretty solid power forward. Don't ruin but, but obviously, if, if Bona leaves, they could also use another uh, center. But the um, one that's been widely talked about is uh, Oregon State power forward Tyler Bilodeau, who nice is, Beaver, uh, quite a baller. Um, he was uh, he, just a baller. He also man. hit the portal with uh, Jordan Pope, and it was maybe talked about that maybe UCLA might go after one or both, but I think right now the priority, especially after getting Clark and uh, Johnson, uh, would be getting uh, potentially uh, Bilodeau, who could, you know, he's he's obviously uh, coming off of a Oregon State team that was last in the Pac-12, yeah. and being nice able to beaver. stay relevant and develop um, in hopes of maybe if, if his plans are going to the NBA, that would, that would be a, a big thing for him to... Uh, uh, develop under McCronin, so that would definitely help. Yeah, and so the Bruins are on a bit of a beaver hunt. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say power forward hunt, but yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think two Oregon State players. Um, I haven't heard anything about Pope at uh, the moment. There's, oh, not there, Pope. There's, okay. there's more. Pe- there's correct. more pressure on uh, uh, getting Bilodeau, gotcha. right? which is a big guy is a uh, much more of a necessity right now, especially a um, a seasoned veteran. Yeah, uh, which they need. Uh, you know, it, there's no word about uh, if Burke or Mara are coming back. But uh, so far, you know, they haven't put their name into the portal. But uh, it is, uh, uh, it does seem like there's going to be an announcement very soon that Adem Bona should announce his, uh, it, it, even if he's just testing the waters, um, he will announce that he's uh, uh, declaring for the NBA draft. He's going to spring into the NBA draft. Exactly. Um, but that's the thing too. What if he? What if he just wants to test the waters? You know that puts McCronin in a particular uh, situation because what if he wants to come back? Uh, I don't think that'll be the thing. I think uh, if he makes a deci- decision, he will stick with it and uh, see it through. So, um, well, whatever he does, good luck to him. He's been a good Bruin. Hell yeah, dude! Hell and we'd yeah. love to have him back. Obvi, <laughs> yeah, seriously, I mean, obvi, obvi, yeah, right. So, so, so those are the the uh, headlines, the uh, the uh, talk around town uh, Hi, in bro. terms of both the women's and men's basketball. Are you done with teams. the goddamn basketball I talk? Am done. Jesus Christ! You engaged in a whole awesome talk with me for like twenty I minutes, know. but that still, that's all right. Mikey, so it is uh, spring camp time, and uh, I think if you go to uh, Hi, bro. Bruin Report Online, they have a cool like central camp page thingy, which is is fun. It, mm-hmm. it, it accumulates all the little stories that are that are written. But our guy, this guy, Mike Regalado, Mike Regalado, was out of practice on Saturday. Mm-hmm. First time this year. Mm-hmm. First time under new head coach Deshaun Foster. Mm-hmm. First time with new offensive coordinator. Eric Bieniemy, mm-hmm. and uh, they did some interviews. Uh, you were there for the interview for Deshaun Foster, right? Yes, on Saturday. Yes. Okay, very good. Very good. Asked him a question or two. Um, so, Mikey, first of all, you went to many. Uh, gosh, darn, I'm sorry. I'm watching. I'm live watching the Lakers Warriors, and it's second quarter, and it's very frustrating. Um, you watched 
you you watch practice under Kelly, sort of. Yeah. He wouldn't let you watch very much. No. And now you've watched practice under Deshaun Foster. Yeah. And he lets you watch a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, just what are your first, just give me your first impressions of the new regime at UCLA, how camp is being run this spring, and what do you think? Well, uh, really quickly, Jake, I just wanted to show you this. I don't know if you saw this. UCLA put this out uh, for the eclipse yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah. It was a it was a partial in Los Angeles, and it was like, oh, did you catch the eclipse? Oh, very cool. And I'm like, yeah, uh, you're damn right I did. And I said, the future is bright at oh, UCLA, Lord. where I put Deshaun Foster in the eclipse. And then guess what? Deshaun Foster quote tweeted me saying shine as bright as a diamond. So there you go. We're basically homies now. We're basically best friends. So we, we should be hanging out, having him, iron Mike, <laughs> having him big applause, big Mike. Uh, on a weekly segment. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's not happening. Um, but no. get that done, Mike. Huh? Oh, Jesus, LeBron. Oh, Jesus Christ, LeBron. Okay, we don't need this right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's football, Jake. Um, right. yeah, but seriously, what the irony doing? there, what, what are you doing? LeBron? I'm sorry. Sir. Um, um there's just there's just a different vibe. You know, the first two days, uh, David Woods and Tracy Pearson went to the uh, Tuesday and Thursday practice, uh, and they talked about the different vibe. But you, you know, you can only put into words how the feeling is when you're there, and that's that that that's what was awesome about going on Saturday because um, not only was it a longer practice, they usually on, on last Tuesday and Thursday. They had two hours, but uh, that extended to two and a half hours on Saturday. Uh, a lot of live periods, which I'll get into shortly. But there's just more openness, and uh, like even from um, you know from a source that I talked to on oh. on Saturday, uh, it's just things are just kind of like easier. The communication is a lot better. It's less secretive, and you can easily feel that when you're there. And even though the, uh, there have been spring practices where Chip Kelly held uh, uh, held it open to the public, I don't know. There was just a different vibe here, and you know, the, for 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 practice, you know, it was just I don't know. It was just more open and friendly and 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 easily accessible. I guess that's probably the best word. Well, e- easily sense. accessible. Uh, so basically, long story short, uh, first 20 minutes, uh, sa- same as every practice, you know, we were able to view the start of practice, mostly drills. Um, for a certain period of time, we could take video and film. But after that, uh, we uh, were, were um, restricted from taking uh, video uh, and, and photos. And we could either stay on the field or go check out what's you know check out the scene uh, in lot eight or up at Luskin. So uh, I went up to Luskin, so I got to see both fields, you know, right in front of me, left and right. And uh, we, we, I was able to do that a few times under Chip Kelly, not during the season. I don't know how they're going to do it actually during the season, but Chip Kelly, this was uh, you know it was really good just to see how they're setting up, especially because it was only the third spring practice under the Deshaun Foster era. Uh, so it, it, they're still getting um, settled. You know, they're still trying to figure it out. Eric Bieniemy is the new offensive coordinator. He's getting his stuff done. Uh, Akeka Malo is uh, doing his thing with the defense, who, uh, and, you know, just quick sidebar. Um, it seems like there's going to be very similar... Um, the defense is going to be very similar to last year, scheme wise. Uh, you know, attacking pressure. Although they have some issues, only because without they, all the people that the will rushers, apply yeah. the attacking pressure. Exactly. And then Fair they. Enough. Oh, I was going to say this in headlines, but I just wanted to bring it here because it's part of the whole. Uh, well, what happens with uh, line depth? Uh, che Bryant Struther, who's been with the program for two and a half, two, three years, I think. Uh, he's in the transfer portal, so that's unfortunate. One of the uh, veterans from last year is. Um, uh, moving on from UCLA, it, it appears. So edge rusher depth is definitely uh, an issue. Um, but it, it it's weird with losing all that depth. And maybe it is because of a natural shift because you're losing so much talent up front. Mm. Uh, it does seem that and we can, we'll, we'll get into this more, but uh, it, it does seem that the linebackers and secondary are the stronger, um, stronger pieces to, to, to the defense. And, and not just because, well, they have more experience, but we're, I'm seeing some good stuff from like uh, Ramon Henderson, uh, Kay Madrano, um, you know, a few a few other guys that are just flying around and 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 making some plays. Uh, Olofemi Oladejo, so that would be good. But UCLA has to figure out what the hell's going on with their uh, 
with our front line and trying to get pressure on quarterbacks. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it was pretty, I would say that the drills were, were, were very much similar to what Chip Kelly did. And even uh, uh, Deshaun Foster said that there, there are the same amount of team periods they just uh, and and from what I saw, they they just stretch them out because, okay, for example, the, the the final two team periods on Saturday, they put 15 minutes on the board for the the ones and twos and threes to go through, try to get down the field against the ones and twos and three defense, but uh, it wasn't a running clock like it was under Chip Kelly. They stopped it for you know hydration breaks for uh, coaching up uh, teachable moments stuff like that. There was even a timeout, Jake. I've never seen a timeout in practice. <laughs> like, and I understand in a live period, you want to get that live feel. But it did seem like uh, a lot of the live periods were more, uh, it, it did feel like a game, which that's kind of cool. You know, especially when you have a lot of guys, especially on offense returning, you want some um, continuity, some some chemistry. And um, that was good to see. Um, but they're still, you know, they're still trying to learn this new offense. So yeah. uh, that's kind of where I want to go. Uh, Deshaun Foster said that this will be more of a West Coast offense, which, you know, a lot of definitions, a lot of ways to do in a West Coast offense. But from what we're seeing, uh, from what I saw, it looked like there was a, there were about 75% run plays to 25% passing plays and not very deep passing plays. It seemed like whenever any quarterback threw deep, uh, it was kind of trouble. So the, the shorter uh, mid-range pass, uh, passing uh, situations, passing plays, were in full effect. And so I think that we're going to see that um, at least to start, or at least in spring. Who knows? By fall, they could have this, this whole thing you know, down pat and you know, just be you know, slinging the ball all over the field or just bruising through you know, people. The run game doesn't seem as strong as it has been under, you know, um, Steele and Charbonnet and, 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 uh, oh, who's the other one um, that went to the Raiders? Uh, I'm Britton blanking. Brown. Britton Brown. But it does seem a little bit bruising. Is Brown done for you? Keegan Jones and TJ Harding look good, but they also seem like they're still just kind of feeling out this offense, especially. Who's that again? What running backs? TJ Harden and, um, <laughs> and Keegan Jones. <laughs> Thank you. Well played. Well played. Um, they also have adopted the fullback and the big bruiser from army who transferred into UCLA a year ago, Anthony Adkins. Mm. He's had, he's at that position. And when we saw the ones and twos and threes uh, on the field, you know, it was a whole new, you just all new, all new people, offensive line, receivers, quarterbacks, blah, blah, blah. Anthony Atkins was with the first, second, and third teams doing fullback, and he was the only one doing it. So it seems like they really want to implement um, having a fullback in there, which we haven't really seen uh, at UCLA in a while. So hopefully that, that it, that's an indicator of more of a bruising run game. Um, well, I mean, I mean, look, Chip Kelly ran a bruising run game his entire tenure there, and he just had different guys doing the work of the fullback sometimes, and sometimes he'd line them up in a, you know, like, it wasn't like a straight-up, like, eye formation a whole lot of the time, but I yeah. mean, he was still using, he's using additional blockers, and he was finding ways to set up a play where he had more blockers at the point of the attack than the defense uh, knew what to do with, you know, and that's a lot of his wacky stuff. Sorry, Jake. I know this is breaking news. I don't. I, I know you don't care, but... Hold on. Can we play the breaking news? Yes, Jesus play the breaking Christ, news. What's the news? News, news, news. Breaking news on a weekly basis. News, so, Justin. I, dude, you were so going to hate me. Oh uh, breaking news. Stanford women's basketball coach Jesus Tara Vanderveer. Christ. Legendary coach Tara Vanderveer, Jake, is yes. retiring. Oh, wow. After 38 seasons. Look at that. Wow. That's freaking huge. That's insane. Sorry. That's like, for me, for you for for suck it basketball Stanford. people suck suck it Stanford. Stanford. that's insane jake suck suck it sorry Stanford. anyway so i just looked on my phone i'm like what but um damn that that's huge news anyway uh i just wanted to throw that out there big respect to her she's won several championships with stanford um but i can see that maybe 
with, with the way that, that things are going with Stanford and Cal going to the ACC, yeah, I can see that happening. Anyway, breaking news, broken. She just uh, don't want, she don't want those freaking flyer mouths. Seriously, man, it is a it's a grind. Trust me. <laughs> going all the way to, to the uh, Atlantic coast. But um, anyway, so you you were talking about... Um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Well, I was going to say, like, uh, I would say at times Chip Kelly's run game was bruising. I, 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 I would think it was more finesse and speed. Would you disagree? Completely. I mean, this whole thing really? is predicated on a big... Running, uh, running attack, and he ran hard. He had big, you know, oh, he had definitely, but offensive I thought, line, yeah, and he moved guys around. He, there's, you have, you know, three, whether he has three tight ends or he's running the blur or whatever, it was built on, you know, a power running game, you know, and 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 uh, so I, I know what you're saying. I, I kind of know the point you're 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 picking at, Mike. But yeah. I mean, if they're going to run the ball and look to throw the ball off of running the ball, that's not a completely separate mindset from what they are coming from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, if they're trying to, like, Chip Kelly was going to have Anthony Adkins just run as the tailback, but now they're going to convert him to a fullback and have him, you know, uh, block and probably carry the ball a little bit too in the short air stuff. It's not a whole, it, it you know, it might come from a different formation or whatever, or it might come from fewer formations or whatever, but I don't think the end the, the style will be that much different if that's what they're looking to do, especially Kelly at UCLA, which was, you know, he yeah. you know, basically created his, uh, a completely different offense from what he had uh, at Oregon. Not completely different as far as, like, the plays are running, but, like, the, the look of it, you know, before they started the play, the formations and all that stuff, with all the tight ends and all that nonsense. And, oh, my God, Lakers, get it together. Sorry, Mike. Continue. So it's it's just interesting in in, in the uh, early stages of, of of spring ball just to see how the these uh, players are 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 doing and uh, um, right now um, it, they have to figure out how they want to organize things and Eric Biadami, uh he talked to the media on uh, last Thursday and was asked about how he designs his offense and he goes you know what it's it's a, a lot of it is based on who's able to perform and how they can perform in our offense that our, our meaning UCLA uh, football's offense. And he even said that he, you know, he, he, he will ask a player. He, he'll ask a coach. It, does this work? Can this work for you? Can you do this? And he wants input, which is really good. But at the end of the day, it's a coach who has to make the plays and, and instill it with, with the players. So uh, that, that, that shows me like right now, he's really trying to feel out what's going on with, with each individual what, player and what he has available to him. What'd you think of coach Bianmi? I mean, you saw the interview with him that was, you know, that, that you guys published uh, last week. Oh, or such a sweetheart, sweetheart. Let's just hear a little bit of him talking to reporters. This is him talking about uh, having a fullback in the offense, which Mike, you just mentioned. You know what? We, we're going to find one and uh, we're going to make sure that, he can play a huge role when needed, yes. You know, I want to uh, basically have a fullback. I think if you have a fullback, it helps you in a number of ways because we ask those guys to do a number of things, whether it's blocking for uh, a halfback, whether it's participating in the pass game, or even taking some of the stress off the tight end. So, you know, I think that position is not something that is lost, but something that is very, very valuable and you'll notice around the league now, teams are starting to discover that fullbacks are, are more of a priority than, than not. You know, he's talking about having a fullback. And, you know, to a degree, stuff like having fullback, not having fullback, the number of tight ends, the you know, the style of play, it all is kind of cyclical. The defense catches up with something. The offense moves to something different. It's kind of like in the NBA, too. Like, first you're going small ball for a while, and then you're going uh, big guys for a while, and it, that kind of goes back and forth as well. Um Mike, but listening to him talk, this is the first time I think I've heard him like talk for a long period of time. He did like a twenty minute interview yeah. uh, last week, and that was I think really really valuable. And one thing I'll say is he is like very very polished. Obviously, he knows he's been doing this a million years, yeah. so he knows what to say when he's talking to the media. And I, I do want to say, Mike, he sounded so friendly and nice and very helpful, and he wanted to explain stuff. He talked all about the fullbacks. He talked about his, what he what his process is and all that stuff. Like, oh my gosh, everybody's saying that he is you know, uh, uh, a crazy yeller type of guy that, that really gets after you. I didn't see it there in the interview at all, Mike. Was there any difference between him talking to the media and how what you observed him, how I'm talking to the players in practice? Only slightly. I would say it's more like this. Why the you I can't the sound of you kiss the most and get off the field. 
So it was a yeah, you know, a lot of similarities between how he talks to the media and and his players, but uh, <laughs> some differences too. <laughs> I was it was funny because you you heard about how fiery he is, right? Oh God, um, yeah, yeah. But and there's something I was worried about uh, with them hiring him, right? And in just the circumstance of Deshaun Foster getting the job very late in the cycle because you know Kelly and you say part of the way so late, and kind of the feel that they were kind of scrambling to put together the staff. And certainly the upside on Eric Bieniemy as your office coordinator at a college program is humongously huge as long as he is motivated to do the job yeah, and he's invested in it, right? Mm-hmm. And something from listening to this interview with him that just struck me was it seems like he is engaged in this. And, like, we're not going to know from a 10-minute interview that he does with the media, but just... I didn't get any negatives off of this. I was yeah. super impressed with how much time, you know, he's spending talking to you guys and just the answer he's giving and what his process is about the players. He's talking about his teaching aspect and all that stuff. And like you guys are trying to pin him down on what the office is. He's like, well, look, I mean, we barely put anything in and we're not here to yeah. put shit in right now. Really? We're here to challenge these guys enough yeah. to see what they can do and what they can't do. You know, the important part right now is not putting in the offense. The important part right now is them being able to evaluate the players, figure out what that they can do. That was a huge point, yeah. And then by the time they get to spring, to I mean, by the time they get to fall camp, now all of a sudden you install the shit you think that these this particular group of players can do. Yeah. So it should be more evaluative here in spring practice. And we really shouldn't know anything about anything. It's just like we're more looking for like the warning signs than we are anything that's like, oh my gosh, that's going to be awesome, right? Yeah. Because everything's new, you know? But anyways... My point being is like, I've been worried about Bienemy as the OC just from the, this is a dude that's got a lot of experience, but does he really want to be at UCLA? Does he really care? Yeah. I kind of had the vibe. I, I saw nothing but positives come out of the just that interview and what, what I've heard so far about how it's going. And that's cool. I mean, I think that could be a very good thing because he definitely has a lot of, this is certainly a guy that's got a lot of knowledge that, you know, that you think, you know, could be a, a good what yeah. did you think? Um, uh, the other thing that struck me with this interview was he's talking about his uh, the offensive line coach uh, Castillo because we we're all kind of wondering, you know, they the the hired the enemy and then Drevno goes after they had already signed Drevno, and um, I thought it was very telling. Bienemy's talking about Castillo being a guy he's known since two thousand, I think two thousand two thousand one, um, when he was with the Eagles, and that this is a guy who was like a mentor for him, and so it's kind of like it makes sense to me. You bring an OC, he's going to have his guys. And it certainly seems like Castillo is one of his guys. And so you understand yeah. why they would get rid of Drevno and make room for this guy, who also is a very, very experienced dude, yeah, coached a million exactly. places for a million years. And those things, as long as they're motivated, these can be really good yeah. dudes to have on your staff. Exactly. Yeah. Really, really quickly, another sidebar. Did you hear where Drevno ended up? I did not. Where did he go? Guess. Hold on. Breaking, one guess. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Get... Uh, breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. I'll, I'll think about my, what my guess is. What's K- kind of glaring, obvious Breaking guess. News. Where did Drevno? Basis. News just in. Cal? No. Where? Who, who was his former boss? Well, I was going to say, did he go off with, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Clay Helton? No. Oh. Who? His recent former boss. Okay. Oh, he went to Ohio State? He went to Ohio You're State. Lying. He went to Ohio what? State. Uh, Ohio State As now. As like an uh, analyst or something? Yes. Okay, yes. There you go. Yeah. Ohio State now has three who former UCLA F coaches. News. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's funny. They know each I did other. Not see that. Yeah. Mike, thanks for telling me. I yeah, they, that that was a, that was an under that. the radar kind of news. Jesus. That wasn't like breaking news. Like Tara Vanderveer Sheesh. is retiring. Yeah, it's not not that big, but wowza. Okay. Um, well, anyways, oh, the other thing I wanted to bring up uh, about so uh, you know watching the interviews with uh, Bienemy and with Sean Foster on uh, Bro or whatever outlet you want to look at, but of course it's going to be Bro, right? Bro, bro. bro. Um, what did you think of Deshaun's? Uh, time so far in front of the media during these spring practices. Uh, How do you think he's handling things? Very charismatic. You can definitely tell that. I'll give this to Chip Kelly. He's been doing this for a while, so he has an answer for everything. Uh, Deshaun Foster kind of has to, he pauses for a second to go how, I could see that in certain situations, he, he, he's pausing and saying, how do I need to answer this? Because he, you know, obviously, you want to answer honestly, but you don't want to give away too much. Um, like like today, he was asked about, uh, like, there was a um, transfer a long snapper who committed to UCLA under Chip Kelly. But uh, he put on Twitter a few days ago that uh, he's um, that has been rescinded. And, no, no. When, and when asked about it, Deshaun Foster said, well, 
uh, 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 as a head coach, I reserve the right to go in a different direction. And he kind of left it at that, which, you know, it is. You know, that wasn't his decision for some of these guys, but ultimately he's the head coach. He knows exactly what pieces he wants and how he wants to go forward. So um, it kind of sucks. That's one of the down things about uh, this this business that is <clears throat> college athletics. But otherwise, he's been pretty charismatic. You know, he he uh, gives really quick, simple answers, which is fine. Sometimes Chip Kelly went into on rants, which... I'm like, do we really need to know all this? This is great information. You're you're telling a story like no other, but it's it's like uh, Chip Kelly is Do- Dostoevsky, and and uh, uh, Deshaun Foster is yes. more like Hemingway. He just tells you. He's like, this is what it is. I don't have Mike, to go into okay. great description. I, I, I can't believe dark. I can't believe you just brought this up, but I have to do this right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, for those that haven't uh, heard Do- Dostoevsky, that dude is dark and he goes really deep into this his stuff. But Hemingway, one of the great Russian writers. Oh, definitely. Of uh, any time. But Hemingway, he's uh, he's uh, kind of poetic, and he just says what no, he he's says. not poetic. He's the opposite of poetic. He's kind he of very direct. Poetic. I, I, yes, yeah. slightly, but, anyway, but more, he's more reason, direct. No, no, he's stop, more direct. Just, that, that, the whole I'm, reason I brought it up okay, is because okay, okay. I, I'm, I know I didn't mean to be short with you, Mike. I really didn't. How dare you? But I was so excited. Who the hell I do you think you are? I almost sent this to you today. Right, I'm well, reading no uh, a movable feast, and uh-huh. and today I just heard one of my favorite quotes I've I've heard from. Uh, so, movable feast is him talking about he he wrote this when he in his older years, and I think he commits suicide within like a few years of this. It's Damn. It's, it's very sad, Ouch. but he's writing about his time in Paris, when, you know, with Ezra Pound and F. Scott Fitzgerald and the whole thing. Like if you watch the Woody Allen movie, um, uh-huh. uh. Jeez, now I can't. Uh, one night, a uh, midnight in Paris. Okay, it's basically based on this book. Okay, all the character sketches, stuff okay. like that. But I'm reading that right now, and there's a there's a chapter on. It, he's talking about um, a guy who's like a like a director. He's trying to describe the guy, and this is how he describes him. And I was just like, oh my god, this is just brilliant. And I do not think I had ever seen a nastier looking man. Some people show evil as a great racehorse shows breeding. They have the dignity of a hard shanker. Lewis did not show evil. He just looked nasty. Walking home, I tried to think what he reminded me of, and there were various things. They were all medical, except toe jam, and that was a slang word. I tried to break his face down and describe it, but I could only get the eyes. Under the black hat, when I had first seen them, the eyes had been those of an unsuccessful rapist. So how do you like that description? Uh, What? (laughs) (laughs) What the hell did I just hear? I heard that this morning. I almost (laughs) drove off off the road. I'm like, that's a hell of a way to describe somebody. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Yeah. Um. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, to, to I'll bet you that. didn't tune into the What's Bruin show thinking you were going to get some Hemingway, <laughs> but that's all right. That's why we're, that's why we're here, folks. Uh, what um, were we talking about? I don't even remember. Just how <laughs> Chip, Kelly, Foster Chip Kelly goes into being like, Hemingway. That's ti- what it is. Yeah, uh, Chip Kelly goes into tirades and just long stories, yeah, yeah. and it's just like, where's your point? Or he says <clears throat> almost nothing, like super laconic. Very much so. Yeah. Yes, I we have not once heard Deshaun Foster say. Um, oh, he's unavailable. He said, oh, well, you know. I'll have um, to ask the trainers. Uh, cu- yeah. Or, you know, Country Strong. Deshaun Morrell is still dealing with Country this. Country Strong. Uh, is he, he still on the he, team? He's been, yes. He, Friend of the What's He Rancho? has, uh, what, what is it? Oh, God. Is it ACL tear? Oh, man. Or injury? Not a, not a tear. Yeah, it, uh, it was. it's a leg injury. But uh, so he's rehabilitating. Hopefully we get to see him this year. That would be amazing. Um, but, yeah, you know, he's just, he's he's still learning the ropes of actually speaking every you know, two or three days, uh, twi- uh, twice a week. Twice on Sunday. And um, just just understanding how he has to read his team and how he has to convey that to, to the media. I think all that's very fair. And this is another thing, going back to what we were talking about when, like, when they first hired Deshaun Foster, right? Yeah. Which, you know, they were hiring a coach in a very kind of desperate time, and they hired a coach with zero head coaching experience. Zero. Right. And obviously we're excited about Deshaun Foster. We think Deshaun Foster wants to be at UCLA. We think he is invested in this job. But the big giant question mark is he ain't never done it before. Yeah. Right. So one of the important things was having a steady hand or two or three or four on the coaching staff. Yeah. And I think that to me this week watching spring practice, getting back to my thoughts on Bienemy as well, is something that is a very positive sign to me because there's nothing to point towards it not happening. Which is a long way of saying, it feels like Sean Foster. He's kind of learning on the job a little bit, but it seems yeah. like he's up to the task up to this point, and I, I, I'm building like confidence in him. Oh, mm-hmm. well, he's still got to prove it. But exactly, I have no doubt that his staff 
behind him is going to be able to help him as he is learning on the job. And it seems like it's this is a nice fit so far. We're not going to know anything until they actually get out there and are coaching games on the field. That's true. But, you know, I think you can, I don't think there's anything, you know, other than the circumstances themselves. Hiring a coach in freaking January, February, that uh, are, are, there's no more red flags beyond that. And in fact, there are a lot of like positive signs, right? You know, the way they have kind of gone back to actually recruiting in a, UCLA fashion or yeah. a or a traditional fashion, that's all good. The way that they talk in that practice, that's all good. The things they're saying in practice, that's all good. So, look, I don't think we can get overly optimistic about the results of this team next year going to the Big Ten for the first time, right? Yeah. But I don't think there's any reason to be overly pessimistic either. You know, let's just see how it goes, and let's let's be happy if they they put together a a, a, a good fun team. Yeah, let's go. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um. Defense-wise, uh, I don't want to get too into it, but uh, <clears throat> it does look very similar to what's going on last year. Sands the quarterback pressure. There, they don't have anybody <laughs> that, that's rushing the <laughs> putting putting uh, as much pressure on uh, opposing quarterbacks. So, as are they you did saying the Bruins are going to go to a 065 defense next year? <laughs> An 056. I'd be down with that. <laughs> And, oh shit! Well, oh well, god! Here, here's a, here's the thing. Defense. Like like uh, Deshaun Foster addressed they got some that. Big guys still on two. Yeah, no, they they so do. Should be like a one one five five. <laughs> Jay Toya, do your thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we haven't talked to uh, a Kekum Malo, and hopefully we do just to get his uh, view of what's going on with the defense. He hasn't had any but, interview. Yet. No, not yeah. yet. But uh, Deshaun Foster talked about how uh, the he did say the defense is going to be very similar. Um, at least in scheme wise, because you don't have the same players, and and uh, that that would that would be freaking amazing. Because you know, obviously, you want to they got to hit the portal now at this point, and and especially for the future, they they've been offering you know a lot of uh, you know solid edge edge rushers, but uh, to get uh, it, it would be nice if they could uh, pull in, you know, get a, get a transfer in from uh, an experienced edge rusher. At least to help out. I don't think they're going to hold down the defensive line, the edges, uh, the defensive end as much as it just doesn't look like it's going to be a strength next. No, it's it's not going to be a strength like it was. But as I said earlier, it does look like the linebackers and the uh, especially the secondary uh, will be much improved. Maybe that's forced. But it also seems like it's 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 talent talent wise because you have to. Um, because you don't like have a, any... it's a natural progression. It, there, it, right. it, there you go. Uh, it, it's most. I would say it's mostly nat- natural progression. It's like they're in. They're, it's kind of like inflation. They're just kind of like, you know, on an uptick just based on experience and time in the program. But Will also, but jump? also with uh, a step in both development and and incoming. Uh, like okay, so uh, uh, Ramon uh, uh, Henderson from uh, the the new the uh, Notre Dame safety, he's already making a name for himself. Uh, d- uh, Devin Kirkwood, he's still looking like a baller. Um, so they have guys in the secondary, which has been a weakness for UCLA, you know, since, you know, the Carter era. I'm just kidding. I'm just, you know, at least in the in the, in the Chip Kelly era, it has not been a strength. And it does look like they have some players that can uh, really um, pressure the passing game. So we'll see. We but... will have to see. Oh, definitely. So, but, uh, that's, I mean, that's literally, something... I think the only reason that the UCLA past defense got better last year is because of all the pressure they're able to generate. And, you know, it's not, this is not rocket science, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to be able to generate a pass rush, rush if you're going to have a consistently decent defense in yeah. some way, shape or form. So look, it's all, you know, and that's one of the things that might put a cap on how good this team can be. If the offense actually does, you know, we all think, you know, this is what I was saying before Chip Kelly left, is like they were going to come back and they were going to have a much better year offensively, like just by the, you know, subtraction of, uh, you know, more, more, more. You know, that There was no other way to do it. Yeah. The defense is another story, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, now with all the transition, it's very, very much a question mark. Will the offense be better? Because you don't know. They're doing a whole nother thing, you know. Um, so that's a question mark too. That's why, you know, we have to like temper our expectations right now, but you know, be pleasantly surprised if it turns out better than we think. Yeah. Um, a lot of like, uh, coaching rankings coming out in the last few weeks. And I mean, I want to bring that up. I it's wanna... like a no brainer. Like who, like if you're ranking big 10 coaches, yeah, there's z- literally a 0% chance 
anybody ranking coaches, there's a zero percent chance people are not going to put Sean Foster at the tail end of that. Yeah. There's I mean, just because he's never done it before on any level. And no one knows who he is anyway, yeah. other than UCLA fans and, and, and guys go, that were like Carolina Panther fans. And going into the Big Ten. And with a bunch of fans that are and commentators that are very, very ignorant to anything UCLA football, right? Yeah. So, Mike, did you have any thoughts about that? I mean, to me, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, what else are they going to do? You knew it was going to be like that. So, But did you have any? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, you see stuff like that, and it's like, oh, how dare you? Then you actually, you're... you're um, sensibility your senses and your sensibility kicks in your logic kicks in you're like oh yeah that checks out <laughs> Deshaun Foster uh comes in at 18 18th on on uh the uh ranked coaches in the Big Ten and you're like yeah that that's pretty much checks out yeah. because of all the things you said he doesn't have experience as a head coach uh UCLA is um in transition uh as a whole especially uh from a ro- roster uh standpoint uh so yeah it's you know, and, and that's the thing. You know, I, I saw a lot of people on, on the social media saying like, oh, bulletin board material, which good. You know, use that. Prove that you are not the 18th best coach in your new conference. Mike, we do have a little bit of breaking news. Uh-huh. What's brewing? News, news, Breaking news. On a weekly basis. I just made news, a Justin. really strong statement that 0% of... You know, uh, writers and commentators will put Deshaun Foster, you know, above 18. Looks like I'm dead wrong. Because your agency, 24-7 Sports. Bro. Bro. They have their rankings. I just looked them up kind of random just to get the list of the Big Ten coaches again because I sure as hell couldn't name them. Ooh, that's a good game. We'll get to that in a minute. But guess what? Deshaun Foster is not 18th according to 24-7 Sports. He is 17th. Who's well, behind him, Mike? Go. Who do you think is behind him, Mike? What? Marilyn. Marilyn. Not Maryland. Rutgers. Not Rutgers. Rutgers. No, Northwestern. Rutgers got great He's good. Northwestern. No, but, you know, who'd they hire? Who did they hire? I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, we'll get to it in a minute. Indiana? Uh, Purdue, the Boilermakers. Uh, yeah. According to 24 7 Sports, they say thus far, the Boilermakers hire of a defensive minded coach after Jeff Brom's departure to Louisville hasn't worked out, but there's still time for Walters to get it because he went 4 and 8 last year. Deshaun Foster's blurb, 0 and 0 first season, the Big Ten's newest head coach. Former Bruin, great, was hired away from an NFL gig following Chip Kelly's exit. Knows the program well and what it'll take to bring the Bruins back to prominence. Enhanced recruiting success is priority number one. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's that's pretty darn good in that. He ain't even coached the game yet, and he's already moved up a ranking. I mean, come on, Mike. All right. Room okay. to celebrate, according to 247 Sports. But anyways, Mikey. How many Big Ten coaches could you name? Uh, <laughs> That's the answer. Oh, this, this, uh, uh, day, a day. Huh? Uh, Fitzgerald, but he got fired. <laughs> okay, so hold on. Who's the coach of Purdue? Fitzgerald. Uh, oh, no, Purdue? I have no idea. I just said it literally, Ryan Walters. Yeah, Ever heard of, I'm, I'm, I was Ever heard of him? heard of him? No. Ever heard of him? Nope. Me neither. Uh, of course, UCLA has uh, Deshaun Foster. Um, Mike, could you name the Washington? Head coach. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fish. Jed the fish. That's right. I'm going to give you a coin for that. Good job, Mikey. Thank you. Okay, so now um, what about, okay, we'll give you another couple of gimmies, Mikey. Uh, the coach of the University of Southern Cal. Uh, Riley. Good job. Um, the coach of the Ohio State University. Uh, Ryan Day. Okay, so w- what do we have there? That's already, what, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. And then what's the coach of UCLA? Uh, Deshaun Foster. That's four. Yes. Oh, you give your coin there. Yes. Mike, you're doing very well. You're doing very well. <laughs> oh, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Okay. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I don't think I'd do any better than you, but we're going to see how bad you can do. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I already told you this a few minutes ago. Who's the Northwestern head coach? Uh, uh, no, no. Shane. Shame. Shane. Shane is Shane. That would be Shane. none other than the, the fiery. David Braun. Yes, David Braun. Ever heard of him? Nope. Me neither. Sure did. All right. So uh, that, that is definitely shame, shame, shame. Okay. I said this one earlier. Let's see if you retain the information. The mighty Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Shano. Oh, Mikey. Oh, where's my drop here? Good job, buddy. That's that's five for you. Five up, one down. Yes. I have a feeling it's going to get harder from here, though. Okay. I'm not going to give you any hints. All right. The old Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Fickle? 
No, 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 no. I'm trying to give you a hint, but you're not looking at me. Oh. Row? 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 Oh, Row? Jesus Christ. Boat? Row the goddamn boat, man. Shane. PJ Fleck. Shane. Oh, yes, because, yeah, he was. Shane. Uh, he was. Uh, Five up, two down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You have zero. You have a zero percent chance of getting this, so let, I'm not even going to okay. teach you about it. Indiana. Uh, Michael Jordan. That's <laughs> a good guess. Shane. It, it, at least it alliterates. Shane. It's Kurt. Kurt Signetti. Shane. Oh, sure. okay. yeah, I don't know. Good he could have been, he could have been the basketball coach for all I know, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh so that's uh okay. And then um there's another one. You've heard of this person. The fighting and Alli I are coached by another alliterative name. Oh god, what the coached hell? all over the all over the country. Mostly Big Ten SEC, I want to say. Brett? Oh, uh, B yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sounds rumpy pumpy. That's okay. That's okay, Mike. All right. Um, scorecard is five to four. Five up, four down. Mike, I'm going to give you another good one. You can get 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 somewhere on this one. None of the... Stop cheating. Don't you look over here. Don't you look over here. Don't you look at your screen. I'm looking at the Terra. You son of a bitch. Anyways, Michigan State, Sparty. Who's coaching Sparty now? Oh, 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 Jonathan Smith. Very good, Mikey. I knew you could do it, and I'm very yeah, proud of you. Yeah, because he... You know, UCLA dropping the ball. No. Who's not coaching the Bruins this year, Mike? Jonathan Smith. There you go. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, that's six four. Okay, uh, let's continue on. Um, we already got Jed the fish. We got okay. This is a trick question. Who is coaching the mighty reigning national champion, Michigan Wolverines? What the hell's his name? Based on he was the offensive coordinator. Oh, that's all yeah. I remember. More must have oh, oh, more. <laughs> You will get a point for that. You will oh. get a point for that. Even though I don't think you're going to get the whole I name. Don't Sharon remember. Moore. Mike, great yes. job. Yes. Mike. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. Great stuff. Okay, moving on. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. One of your favorite opponents mm -hmm. over the years because of how classy they are out there in Bugaha. Nebraska Cornhuskers are coached Rule? by Matt Rule. Mike. Nice. You are tearing this up, big boy. Oh my gosh! I should okay, do better, okay. but <laughs> eight up. No, I don't think you should. Are, do you think anybody other than people that actually attend the University of Indiana are going to know the f hell Kurt Signetti is? Okay, well that's that's an outlier. Now look, next that's year an... should we know? Yes. Oh goddamn me! Yeah. Absolutely. Uh huh. Like absolutely. But this year, no, you, you get a pass, bro. Uh, 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 I Mike, like, I like Skagney. You are making me fucking proud. <laughs> Go Bruins! Cheers, y'all. Right, right. Go Bruins! All right, okay, it's just going to get worse from here. All right, back here. Uh, no, I don't think so, because you got a chance of this one. Okay. There's some ties. This guy has coached against UCLA the last, you know, number of years. He's coached against us. Not for this team, but he coached against us. Okay. Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Badgers. Oh, oh, fickle, hated. fickle, fickle. Oh, my God, Mike. Luke you're fickle. on You're on fire. In fuego, bro. I only know that because I really want to go visit. Stupid Luke I fickle, really want to go to. Stupid Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah. Those cheeseheads. Wait, he was at Cincinnati prior to that. Yeah. Everything about the Wisconsin program appeals to me, other than the fact that they're Wisconsin and they beat UCLA so many times that I hate them. I hate them so much. Yeah, but Wisconsin's cheese, cheese like curds, bro. Cheese in my curds. top five of most hated programs. Cheese curds are amazing. Especially I agree. Wisconsin cheese I curds. agree, <laughs> but Wisconsin, like we should do that topic in the offseason. What are your top five most hated programs? Obviously, number one's SC, but like after that, what is it? Wisconsin is so high on my ranking. Really? I hate Ron nice. Dane. I, I've, yeah, yeah, that was rough. <laughs> okay, Mike, another gettable. Mm -hmm. Another gettable. His knee was down. Iowa Hawkeyes, baby. All that offensive struggling. Oh, God. You can um, do it. You can do it. Frenetti. Don't let me down. Frickle. Oh, my Frick, God. Frick and frack. Shane. Okay. Shane. Yeah. Sounds rumpy pumpy. Kirk Ferentz. That's okay. You, Ferentz, you, yeah. Mike, you are, at this point, how many teams are in the Big Ten? 10? 18. 18, I know. You are guaranteed <laughs> right now, as of right this second, you're going to, guaranteed to go 500. Oh, so I, I've clinched a playoff spot? You've clinched 500. Yes! <laughs> I've, cl I've clinched a bowl. <laughs> okay. All right, what do we got? I, I have faith in you, because there's like two more gimmies here. Okay. At least one. Nice. Penn State. The, oh, oh, wait, oh, it's not oh, the Penn State. Oh, this is Penn State. Penn, what, what, we are Penn State. That's what I'm looking for. Mike, I'm trying to stall for you because you should get this. Yes, I should. Named after a Phoenix character. Uh, Linus? Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Sounds rumpy, no, 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 pumpy. No. Okay, God, you know what? As, it... as happy as I was Luke, with you Luke, before, uh... I'm a little disappointed, but you're still doing better than I thought. James 
Fucking Franklin. Franklin. Yes. Thank you very much. By okay. the way, that new uh, Franklin Peanuts on a- Apple Plus. I'm literally it's, like playing air lovely. piano for it's him lovely. over here. I'm yeah, like, Linus played yeah. the piano, Jake. No, it was it was it was Franklin. He's the black guy and he played the piano. No. Right? Look it up. No. Look it up right now. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look Franklin it up. had the army Peanuts, dad. piano Mike, we're both idiots. What? Sounds rompy pompy. Sounds rompy pompy. Oh, you're right there. It's Schroeder. Oh god. How do we fucking miss that? I know we're stupid. Right. Whatever. That's that I'm more ashamed of that than I am about your I know, record right? of picking Big Ten <laughs> coaches. Okay. Pretty so I, embarrassed about that. I don't this. know if I marked you off for that one as wrong, but uh yeah, we'll, we'll that catch was, it up that was that was yeah, that was wrong. Quack quack. They look they fly in a mighty formation, the Oregon Ducks. Oh, landing. Land Danning. Dan Lanning. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mike. See? I mean you're you're over you're off the schneid. You got I'm actually it. I'm actually impressed by how many Big Ten coaches I know. <laughs> Mike. It was pretty impressive. Ten up, mm-hmm. eight down for my count. I might have been off. Yeah, I might have given you one less for Deshaun or one I, more. I don't know. Whatever. I'm, I'm, bowl, still, I'm bowl eligible. That's bro, all I care about. You better than I thought you would. And no. you did better than <laughs> I thought I would. So hey, so that deserves a big celebration, Mikey. Good job. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I, I'm proud of me too. I was like, wait a minute, Big Ten. Oh my God, I got to know this. You know what though? What's that? Quiz me on on basketball. I will do worse, guaranteed. Oh, worse, yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to flex. Oh, I do. I do so much better. Oh God, no. Uh, uh-uh. uh no. All right, Jake. What's happening to the Lakers? Oh, gosh, they're, oh, they're winning. They're oh no, 10, they're like, losing. They're down by ten, oh. but they were down by more than that. So I'm. Uh, and by the way, ah, you know, right. at the at the end of the first half, uh-huh. there were uh, eight th- or nine three point shots between Curry and Draymond. What was their shooting percentage on those three point shots? Thirty three percent. Nine for nine. And, oh, they were, and the Lakers were only wow. down by 11 or whatever. So, I mean, wow. God, if they could just, you know, get some good luck from the three-point line, I think we'll be okay. But it's still <sighs> midway through the third. Davis Come on, is guys. out, right? Come on, guys. Is he? I thought he was out, yeah. I thought because the... Uh, the eye thing? Ailman. Oh, I didn't yeah, even know. Was... I'm watching this game. I didn't even know that he was out. Okay, I don't feel nearly as bad. And it's like, this sucks if he didn't play. Did he not play? Oh, I'm sorry. Nobody wants to hear this. We are off um, track. We, let's get to what's wrong with you while I investigate okay, that. Let's do it. Um, I have a couple of segments we're going to do soon, but what's not now. With you? You ask me. What's with me? Oh, son of a bitch! Yeah. He's out. You know, it sucks. The Lakers get themselves into this great position to do really well in the playoffs. This is my what's wrong right now. I'm going on a fucking ramp because... They, <laughs> go, like, go. I've been... Jake, what's wrong with you? Oh, my God. Thanks, Mike. It's just like... <laughs> We get so close, and they they dick around with their gosh damn with their, their lineups for the first you know two thirds of the season. They they show what they can do by winning the friggin' in season tournament. And they they're ballers, man, and they lose like they have AD and LeBron healthy as hell for the entire goddamn year, but they don't have their role players healthy. You know the Vandos and stuff like that, and they, they and they don't get their shit together. And then now they're playing like they're playing so good, and just because AD can't put on the goddamn goggles like the captain, he's he's playing so good right now. Put on some goddamn goggles and get in the goddamn game. Yeah. I mean, I hope it's not already too late, but they can't lose this damn game. LeBron, please. They're only down by six. Four minutes, 23 seconds left in the third quarter. But I'm, we're going to sign off this What's Bruin show, and uh, I'm going to be completely discombobulated and disconsolate if they don't pull this game out because that means yeah. they're going to be definitely in the play-in, probably the 10 seed. They're going to have to win two games. They're going to get a goddamn series like, oh, it sucks. I care about the Lakers. Yeah. Yeah, you It's do. been a rough sports weekend for me, Mike. <laughs> yeah. The Grizzlies had their first football game. It's been a rough sports life. How'd you do? We didn't even finish the game. The what? game ended on a on a on an injury to a player on the other team. There was a minute and a half left. We had the ball and uh a were, chance were to tie you? the game. Oh. We failed to score on earlier in the game on a on a possession from the three yard line. Uh-huh. We failed to score on another possession where our player got like murdered on a on a defenseless receiver hit on like the twenty yard line. They didn't call a flag. Our coach walks onto the field. Their player tells our coach to fuck off, and then they throw a flag on our coach for walking on the field. And then it was just very you know these are all Weird. law enforcement <clears throat> players like playing against each other. You'd think they'd be a little better behaved, but both teams were just like kind of out of control at certain moments. Nice. Um, it was not fun. It was like pulling teeth, and uh, I literally got thrown out of the game as an administrator. You did? Yes. Dude, I've never been thrown out of a game before. <laughs> because that's, at that's, one that's point... That's very punk rock, Jake. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, it was a very frustrating experience. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yes. 
I'm just, that's 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 what yeah, I'm we, just we, say. we have administrators getting thrown into the games. We have Do- Dostoevsky and Hemingway references. We right. have Peanuts references. The game was like pulling this, teeth. This is the this is this episode has everything. Yeah, and my <laughs> Sunday continued to have my teeth being pulled. Uh oh. And then Monday, it was the, they're still pulling molars out. So yes, but I'm hoping your son. It's all over. Got DQ'd in his relay because the guy who took the baton from him fell down and, and threw the baton on the next part of the leg. Oh, yes. Okay, Otherwise, it would have come in third. He would have got a medal. Nice. Yeah. So I'm happy. That but part the, was but this is his but first season because in, he got in, DQ'd. In track, right? He's literally ran. He's ran four races total. In his life. In his life. And he oh, won. Shit. He won his heat the other day. Well, there you go, man. But uh, yeah, and he's he's, he's doing good. He's I really hate the kid. fact that he's like more than twenty years younger than me, and he has what two inches on me? Two inches, and I'm pr- I I guarantee you, and I, Mike, I love you, but I guarantee you, uh huh. If we did a bench press contest, I mean, he's gonna be. Oh, tall, I thought you were gonna say like weight. Thirty oh, pounds. Bench, yeah, yeah, no yeah, doubt. Like no doubt. Pounds. No doubt. Uh, <laughs> he's a beast. He's an eighth grader, and he's a beast. I'm proud. Yeah. Of him. Anyways. Yeah. That's, thanks for bringing it around to a sunny thing, Mike. That made me a little happier. Mike, that's what's what I do. That's what I do. I, 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 I may be all goth on the outside, but uh, up, up, up here, Jake, up, up in the old noggin. Yeah. Okay, it's pretty dark there too. But there's some <laughs> rainbows, some sunshine and rainbows. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. So this is a very busy week. My daughter uh, just got. Uh, you know, she's in eighth grade, so she's going into high school. Let's go. She has her. You know, she she got accepted to a Maranatha a High School out in Pasadena. So you know, go Maranatha. Uh, she has. Oh God. She tried on her freaking eighth grade dance dress. She has her eighth grade East Coast trip in a few weeks. Did you she, tell she her, has her that it's um, very important? When she's on that dance floor, she's got to leave room for what, Mike? Skanking? God. Stop. There's got to be room for God. Right between her and whatever other body she's dancing with, you got to leave that space. Who's that space for, Mike? Whatever God you believe in. Deity? Yeah. I don't know. Leave that space there. Exactly. You know why? You know what that prevents? Huh? You know what that prevents, Mike? Leave room for God. Right there. No slow dancing for those eighth graders, bro. It's okay. I've been teaching to. I've been teaching her to um, just in case. Whenever you need to punch someone, oh yeah, put 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 your knuckle out right in the throat, right <laughs> in the throat, or a nice swift, a nice swift kick to the junk, always does the trick. And turn her around. Yeah. But yeah, no. But it's all that stupid stuff that I have to worry about as a dad. Her going to dances, getting ready for her, uh, uh, you know, math placements and all that. Get after uh, her. She's Mike. going to eighth grade. Uh, she ha- she has her eighth grade East Coast trip uh, very soon. Uh, and this weekend, where are they going? Are you doing the Colonial Trail or whatever? She's doing, uh, yeah, similar to what yeah. I did. She's Love she's that. going to um, uh, New York, it- Philly, Washington D.C. So that's awesome. Just I, that's just a fantastic uh, journey, which I, I I loved when I was a kid. Uh, but also this weekend, but she, unlike she's- Mike's trip to Philly, Philly recently, no bars. Let's hope. You know, it would. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and okay. I would, you know. Her mom's a uh, uh, vegetarian, so she can't experience the uh, the Philly cheesesteak. But uh, hopefully oh, one day she, she gets to understand. Although there is a place called Cruiser Pizza in Hollywood that does a very, very good clone of a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Yeah, not the same, but it's a good uh, jumping off point. Either way, uh, yeah. No, don't so, make me so, play so, drop, so, Mike. So, so my my um my daughter's uh, uh, turning into um, you know a, a young lady. Which uh, respect and I absolutely love her and she's she's been a, a fa- fantastic human being which I'm very proud of so all cheers to her. Also, let's uh, go. My um, this this is funny. So their mother has she always had amazing eyesight. My eyesight crap. Uh, so my daughters, both of them, got checked out recently. Amazing eyesight. Hugo, that's good. He got my jeans just like that. Hugo. Just got his first pair of glasses. Wow. So, yeah, he's looking all styling and all that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been a really, um, you know, deep, you know, family uh, week worth of stuff for 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 the uh, Regalados um, here. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I've just been focused on that. Um, but other than that, um, got football coming up. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week to see more, uh, to, to, to talk about more of what's uh, going on with uh, the UCLA football uh, program in spring practice. Awesome, Mike. Well, that's good. Um, it's funny, this morning, or actually right up until about 5.30 this afternoon, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a solo show or a Mike show. Mm-hmm. It's because, we, Mike, we've been just kind of like kind of not yeah. checking in a little bit. Yeah. It's not 
you. It's not just me. It's like both of us, right? It's just, it is because we're I blame Jamal and, and Bill too, you jerks. Well, normally I would have to like <laughs> shepherd Bill, but now that we don't have to worry about that, you know, it's like, I just kind of. But yeah, no, I, I. We're acting as if Bill is still part of the What's Bruin show. He is now firmly in the and guest department, right? He's not, <laughs> he's not acting on the show anymore. <laughs> but anyways, I had uh, a couple ideas for segments to get into. We just kind of organically jumped into this Big Ten coaching quiz that's wonderful but uh we'll have some more things like that coming up in the next few weeks to to get us through yeah the uh the the off season but anyways if you have any thoughts email us uh what's brewing show at gmail.com tweet us at what's brewing show and uh call the hotline 805 399 4 wbs sorry i interrupted that but uh we should do, we, we gotta do an after dark soon we should just a, just a uh rants or whatever or Flow, Don't get me started <laughs> on the goddamn IRS, Mike. Yeah, I'm in a dark place right now. But anyways, it's okay. Yeah, uh, let's let's let's, let's let's finish this, you motherfucker. Government only says. I never take that off the board, Mike. So I mean, let's just play that. The government totally <laughs> sucks, you motherfucker. The government totally okay, this, sucks. You know what else sucks? What? LeBron James goes out of the goddamn game, and they go from down by 40 to down by 17, going to the fourth quarter. This game is over. I hate the circumstances of this season. This is a good team, and it's not going to work out for us. Mikey, okay. until next time, what do we say? Go Bruins. Good evening. Smoke them if you got them. That was the What's Bruins show. Try us tomorrow. Same back time, same back channel. It's got to be in or out, Mom. In or out. Well, I need the door closed. Thank you for your cooperation. Dude, Rob, we place a ball on the West Coast. The final word is boob. 